balance. I always say, look, their behaviors are the fundamental layer. You have to do the right things for anything, for sleep, for learning, for uh, sports performance. But then there's nutrition, supplementation, prescription drugs, and then off-label stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so we always think about when you hear hormones in sports, you always think just the raw conversation about anabolics, all the banned stuff. We could yeah. talk about that stuff and how it works. Years ago, I used to work on androgens, testosterone and its derivatives and how it impacts brain development and body function, fear and, and also mental states. But there's a category of supplements that are very interesting that for most people who aren't exploring testosterone augmentation for sport, work very well to increase testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Not, you know, 300, you know, not a tripling or anything like that. And the main ones are two substances. One is called Tonga Ali. Oh, yeah. Which that is, stuff's real, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Tonga Ali, about 400 milligrams per day, has the effect of raising free testosterone and overall testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. So the typical dose of, of uh, testosterone replacement therapy mm -hmm. is 200 milligrams given once every week to two weeks. But when you look at a full syringe, what is that? So for one cc, one mil, right. that's 200 milligrams typically of cipionate, which is sold. One in cc, a full cc is only uh, two. So one cc is not going to be that much. It's a, yeah. So it depends if you have a little narrow syringe. Okay. Right. Right. But if you have a, a, a syringe that goes up to 10, what right. is that's, that? That's 10 cc's. That's, that's a lot. That's 10 cc's. Yeah. That's a thousand. Okay. Milligrams. That makes sense. Right, right. So that, it would be two on that, and that's yeah, 200 milligrams. That's right. So, well, okay, like, so as Jesus long as we're going Christ, down this path. I thought you were path, saying like two yeah. full syringes. Yeah. I mean, I actually think that a lot of people who think they need TRT, when I hear about guys in their 20s and 30s, it, it, I mean, look, I'm in my mid-40s, and I, I can tell you that you can get and maintain very healthy testosterone levels without TRT if you do the right things, the behaviors, the nutrition, all the other stuff. A lot of problems that are that are layered onto estrogen are actually problems with prolactin, which is a molecule that's involved in milk letdown and lactating women, but um. it actually shuts down the sexual desire and aggression. You know, when uh, this is interesting about prolactin. So um, this happens in brooding birds and it happens in humans. They've done this. A study published in the journal Nature, which is our kind of apex journal, showed that when the husbands of pregnant women, because of something, maybe a pheromone, maybe some odor, of the pregnant woman actually increases the man's prolactin when they're pregnant, puts body weight on the guy, starts laying down body fat, presumably to prepare the father for the long sleepless nights ahead because humans have always co-parented. Wow. Um, I'm mostly co-parented. We, so we all know women do there, far more, but it, it's dudes true. Dudes out there who get fat, don't feel bad. Yeah, the, that's so what's the, going on. The dad bod is, is <laughs> in real. part due to an increase in prolactin. Oh. And testosterone and prolactin are kind of working in opposite fashion. So it's a very interesting thing, but uh, the way you describe it is correct. Now, for people that aren't getting prescribed TRT, but want the increase in testosterone, there are these plant compounds like Tonga Ali and another one, which is very interesting. It's a Nigerian shrub called... Fidogia agrestis, and it mimics luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone that comes out of the hypothalamus that stimulates the testes if you got those and your ovaries if you've got those to make more testosterone or estrogen. And so those two herbal supplements together can give a significant boost in free and active testosterone. So you said Tongan Ali can give you 100 to 200. Yeah, about that. But what does the other one give you? Fidogia is usually taken at about 600 milligrams. Um, and that can mean I, the, the most dramatic effect I've ever seen was somebody who had his testosterone down in the low twos, or I think it was like low twos, and it, he got it up to the 700 range, which, but really? that's it, but that's an outlier, right? Most people are going to see about a three to 400 point increase. And that's what the two of them syn synergistically yeah. The doji will actually make the testes grow. It's a, really? it's a, it's a noticeable difference. Testosterone has the, the effects we're all aware of, like deepening the voice, facial hair, muscle growth, recovery, et cetera. Mostly because testosterone increases protein synthesis. You look at a, a young male in puberty, it's a protein synthesis machine. Yeah. They eat, they eat, they eat, and they just grow and grow and grow, and they're putting on muscles and they're lean and, you know. So most often they're lean. But in any case, testosterone has some very interesting effects on the brain. The, the major mental effect of testosterone is it makes effort feel good. Oh, that makes sense. And the reason it does it is that the amygdala, this fear center in the brain, this anxiety center in the brain, has androgen receptors. It has testosterone receptors. And so it, it, the way this works in animals and in humans as well is that for most species, the males of that species never get a chance to mate. 
right? So if you think about, uh, I'll probably pick an example where you'll, you'll know the exception because I know you know a lot about natural animals and a- animals that are hunted. But if you think about animals with antlers like rams, there's been a lot of research, believe it or not, on rams. It'd be fun. Mm. To, I'd love to work on Do you know rams. rams have enormous balls? And they have to fight for the right to mate. Yes. And the fighting is a choice. Right, and the decision to walk away is a choice. Usually, they usually don't kill each other. Although I know some of the injuries can lead to death. So testosterone, these surges in testosterone that happen seasonally in certain species like rams or even these little hamsters, the males will rip each other's testicles off in order to fight for the right to mate. So males of a given species have to actually overcome the fear of pain and punishment, and the surge in testosterone is what causes the shift to the willingness to engage in battle. Mm. And so when humans are taking low doses or, or reasonable doses of testosterone, or they're increasing their testosterone, or they're going through puberty, effort and leaning into pain and challenge actually has the effect of making the body feel soothed and good. It's a drive, just like sex is a drive or drinking water when you're thirsty is a drive. This stuff is all anchored deep within the hypothalamus. When people are testosterone depleted, they feel depressed. And when people have a surge of testosterone, they feel relief and anxiety, provided it's in the appropriate range.